Suppose you encounter a problem like this. You have a 4 nanocoulomb charge at the origin, and 3 meters to the right, 4 meters up, is point P. And they ask, find the electric field at P. What do we need to do to do this? First of all, let's think about it conceptually. This is a positive charge, so the electric field created by it should be pointing away from it everywhere. Right? It's radiating outward. So if we imagine going this way, the electric field should look like that. So that's the electric field. And to find the electric field, which is a vector, we need its magnitude and its direction. As far as direction goes, this angle theta is going to be the same as this angle theta. If you notice, this is 3 meters and this is 4 meters. We can use Pythagoras, because this is a right triangle, to find that this is 5 meters. We can then note that the cosine of theta is 3 meters over 5 meters. Sine of theta is 4 meters over 5 meters. So that's 0 0.6, that's 0 0.8. Set that aside for now. We need this electric field, and one thing we could do would be to find the components, the electric field x and the electric field y. That's not strictly necessary to find this, but we can tell from the triangle that if this is the magnitude of E, then the electric field X is going to be magnitude of E cosine theta, and the electric field Y is going to be the magnitude of E sine theta, because you have to break the vector into components. But what about the magnitude? Here's where knowledge of actual electric field comes in. The electric field of a point charge its magnitude is kq over r squared. You might also see it written as q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Those are the same thing. k is the same thing as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Newton soloed physics 1, but physics 2 was developed by a d couple of dozen different people. So it kind of shows. Some people were using k, some people were using epsilon naught. They're like, oh, right, we're talking about the same thing, just different ways. The reason that one of these hasn't eclipsed the other is because some formulas actually look better with the epsilon naught, and some formulas look better with the k. At any rate, the amount of this is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. The force between a couple of coulombs is 9 billion newtons if they were one meter apart. Now that we know K, the electric charge Q is 4 times 10 to the negative ninth power coulombs, 4 nano coulombs. So K times Q, the 10 to the ninth and the 10 to the negative ninth cancel out. What do we use for R? Now, a lot of students make mistakes here. They start putting in like three meters when they're trying to find electric field X and four meters when they're trying to find electric field Y. No, 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 no. What's going to determine the strength of the electric field is how far away you are from the charge. You are five meters away from the charge. That is the quantity that goes in. Then you break it up into components. If you put in three meters, you're going to find the electric field strength here, which is a lot closer to the charge than that is. So the electric field at point P in magnitude of the vector is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times 4 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs divided by 5 meters squared. And that works out to 1.44 newtons per coulomb. And those are units of electric field. Your class might refer to it as negative potential gradient but it's electric field in just about every book you'll find. That's the magnitude. So the components EX would actually be 1.44 Newton per Coulomb times the cosine of theta, which is 0.6. And the electric field Y will be 1.44 Newtons per Coulomb times 0 0.8, which is the sine of theta. And that gives us our components. If you need to know theta itself, you can use inverse tangent of 4 thirds, 
53.1 degrees. So the answer to the problem in terms of magnitude and direction would be 1.44 newtons per coulomb magnitude in a direction of 53.1 degrees above the positive x-axis. Or if you want the components, it would be 1.44 times 0.6 and 1.44 times 0.8 and 1.152 newtons per coulomb. 0.864 newtons per coulomb. So I made a mistake for a moment, but I caught it immediately because a component cannot be bigger than the hypotenuse. So that is how you find the electric field at a point when you need to find the vector components or magnitude and direction.